welcome to another fine edition of Plank of the Week. We are already now in the month of July. Uh, we've got some great news coming from Boris Johnson. We've got unlocking stuff all over the place. And I'm delighted to tell you, you will be very pleased to know that we've got the old firm back in town. Uh, it's Kevin O'Sullivan and, of course, Dawn Neeson, the pair that kept us going for so many months through the pandemic and through the lockdowns of the early part of this year. Um, I had to separate them briefly for a while, uh, obviously because of, uh, you know, what can only be described as health and safety reasons? Yeah, yeah, but I thought they might start punching each other. It's actually unrequited passion, it to is be honest with you, passion. isn't so it, Kevin? Yeah, imagine you, my delight to have you back. We kept the show going uh, to the extent that we couldn't stand the shots <laughs> of each other. <laughs> Despite that, they're back together, uh, possibly for the final time. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed. We shall see. But Dawn, I feel as though I should offer you the first opportunity you know, to give us the first. I'm going to nominate Kevin O'Sullivan. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I win. Yeah, <laughs> every week. Plank of the week. Every go week. The there you go. Give him the, give him the plank. That's it. Absolutely right. right. I, I'm going to start with the biggie of the week. Yes. Sage. Sage. And the Brothers Grimm. Yes. I'm throwing them all in together on they're, this they're one. They're all in it together. Yep. They have an opportunity to give us the best news they've ever given us during yeah. this entire pandemic yes. in a press conference. And what do they do? <laughs> ruin they it. They ruin it. But yes. they make it more miserable than going to someone's funeral, which obviously we might even be allowed to do now. Right. It's like, it's like rather than, you know, give us the good news. 19th of July, Freedom Day. Get out there. Hug people. Yeah. You know, don't Take wear your mask off. off. Take your mask yeah. off. Well, I think that was great, though, and, wasn't and it? But then, but then, yeah, it was great, Mike. But then they make it so damn downbeat. Yeah. But do you know what the problem is as well? Because they stage all the questions. You know, whether oh. they're from members of the press or members of the public. You know, a witty starts banging on about how and under what circumstances he would wear a well, mask. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the, the worst, the worst. When bit. he's in the park, so yeah. people don't beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is why I felt being a girl. You know, they are good for your safety, yeah. Chris. This is, yeah. this is why I thought that I would not nominate him personally on the grounds that people have a go at him. Yeah, However, shocking. what really annoyed me, so much so that I wanted to punch the TV, not the man, yeah. was the fact that he said, well, yeah, I'm going to wear a mask if people around me feel uncomfortable if I'm not wearing one. Oh, I man mean, come on, exactly. That is, that is ridiculous. Because but, I said earlier on today, what if I feel uncomfortable about you being in charge of our uh, public health? Yeah. I feel a Which, bit uncomfortable enough, about that. Would you resign, please? Yeah, yeah exactly. Thanks very much and anyway. Funny enough, I feel quite uncomfortable when everyone is wearing masks. Yes. And then getting too close to me. Yeah. People have this, this idea that masks are the be-all and end-all. They're not. Mm. Yeah. Most, most scientists will agree that the masks that most of us are wearing, the fashion masks yes. and bandanas, yeah. are completely they and utterly nothing. pointless. Yeah, exactly. mm. They achieve nothing. They don't protect you, they don't protect anyone no. else. But now the word is out, of course, that oh. they make you feel as if you're doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Because well, we've now got it. the mask kind of debate going on. The new Brexit. On. The new Brexit. It is the new Brexit. Yeah. Did you see that tweet from George Monbiot, yeah. you know, the yeah. bloke from The Guardian? Wearing a mask is now the new defiance. Yeah, it's right. just really? like get out of your bedroom once in a while, it's mate. Not, yeah. It's extreme it's, compliance, you yes. little dweeb. It I is, know. isn't it? It's like you know, and all these people that are hurling abuse at non-mask wearers, i.e., you're selfish mm. and you're not doing Brexiteer. your bit. And, yeah, and, <laughs> bigot, and, and, racist. Uh, you know what? Yeah, the only one I'm surprised at is no one's actually yeah. said you're oh, they racist. Will, though. Yeah. Oh, they will. I'm trying to work. There must be a link, Kevin, between not yeah. wearing a mask and being a racist. There well, has no, to be no, a link. No, no, it's just automatic for those people. Yeah, if they see you not. Yeah. wearing a mask they'll go racist yeah, yeah that's yeah. right yeah so don't you care about old people yeah, yeah. i know yeah you care about old people yeah. Yeah. so uh, any case i've been wearing a mask for 10 days now for have you not re no i've got my little exemption badge well done yep and i've been and uh, you know what no one's no one's dared mess with me no so i mean i think already the, the, the sort of evaporation of these rules has already happened. But there is, it's like the announcement today about August the 16th, where um, if you're double jabbed, you don't, you don't have to uh, um, isolate. And it's like, well, the virus is going to be able to tell the time, and it's like the date, and it's like yeah. the 15th of August, no, right? Why, okay. why does it have to be another month? I, I mean, know. It's why, ridiculous. If, if you're, if you're double vaccinated half. now, why not do it now? I know. And also, I don't approve of that, because that sets, there's your divided society mm. right there. People have got every right to refuse to have the vaccine. So, if we get to a point where well, do you those know what? who are it's double vaccinated... about that. You shouldn't be refusing to have it. You should be just not opting to yeah, have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's I not mean, a refusal, okay, is it? But, but they have every right not to have yeah. the... Uh, it's a, their legal uh, and human right not to have the vaccine. So, if we get to the point where, if you can prove double vaccination, you uh, don't have to self-isolate, mm. uh, what about the people who haven't had the vaccination? They d will have to self-isolate, and there you have a very divisive... Yeah, uh, yeah, indeed. yeah you do. It's and wrong. 
wrong. It's wrong. And there are some people that are genuinely yeah. uh, cannot have the vaccine yeah. Yeah. for so medical here's, reasons. Here's what so do. what are they going to do? But here's, you can't lock down society no, for that. No, here's what we do: is we cancel self isolation. Yes. It's crazy. There's no point to it. Yeah. I mean, at no. the moment, it is completely crippling our school system. And, right? Uh, They've well, got more yeah. than five hundred thousand yes. kids now off school, and yeah. there's definitely something going on. And a lot of it could be down to the yeah. fact that the kids are just absenting themselves yeah. because of this test that they're faking. Well, you can cheat. And they're making it. Yeah, but I mean, if you were a fifteen-year-old boy and you didn't fancy going to school. Well, what would you do? What would you do? Yeah, go, oh, look, absolutely. I've got a positive test. Kate yeah. Middles has given it to the whole of Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> the cricket was screwed in the cricket because yeah. they're, they're all I off I did now. like the Mail's headline today, Isolatey Katie. I thought that was yeah, good. Yeah, that was quite clever. Very good. I gave them full marks with, with, the, with the kids thing, right, being sent home from school, how can they have a bobble of an entire year group, like exactly. 100 kids? Well, their schools uh, One down kid coughs. where my kids live in Sussex that are completely closed. They've closed the whole school, right? Unbelievable. It's so not, nobody can go to the school, despite the fact that they might have only had maybe one positive yeah, test, yeah, yeah. which might not even be right. <sighs> it's well, hard to it's believe, just, isn't it? madness. And uh, uh, to be fair to the teachers, who I think are very coronaphobic anyway, but these are the rules yeah, at the moment. It's the government's got to change the bloody rules mm. and let uh, kids Well, this is where they've finally done the right thing. They've or... finally done the right thing, recognising, as Sajid Javid said, that he's the Secretary of State for Health. Not the heterosexual yeah, state, but you know, absolutely. That right, right, he's right, actually right. And, hit the and clearly running, watching man. Witty and Valance with Boris the other day, oh. they clearly weren't very happy about what his decision no, 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 has no. finally yeah. become. Well, it, it was because, the yeah. Also, what about the questions, eh? Beth oh. Rigby asking if it was reckless. Really, Beth? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you know, do you want, just remember, go and have another party? Have another party. Yeah, and yeah. Don't worry about mm. how many people you hold. Or wearing a don't mask. Don't worry about what or... the rules are. I actually don't criticise her. Okay, go on. I think it was slightly <laughs> hypocritical. I mean, oh, I don't ooh. criticise people for going out and having a good time because good for them. But you know, don't tell everybody else that you've been reckless but, but, after but, you've been suspended I, from yeah, your own quite. job. I know. And they're, for they're three all, months. And, and huh? all the all the journalists ask exactly the same question: Is don't you think we're being reckless? Shouldn't we all be locked down and wearing masks until? October, November, December. And now I think it was ITN's uh, correspondent who said, how bad do you expect it to get? I mean, <laughs> what sort of question is that? <laughs> how bad do you... Well, I don't expect it to get bad at all, actually. But do we think, boys... Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Quite. Do we think, boys, that this is it now? weeks, that was, I think. Yeah. Do we, do, do we think this is it? Because Sage, my reason for nominating them is the proviso, but, but... But well, they've this said they've, could be temporary. Well, no, they've said they've said that within weeks uh, we might have to reimpose restrictions. Yeah. So that's on their assumption yeah. that they're in charge of the country. Boris Johnson has clearly made a decision uh, in partnership with the new health secretary that they're and not going to rule the no. roost, roost anymore. No, exactly, yeah. because they've all well, agreed. So they're not in charge. And I thought Boris happen. made a very good point when he said, look, you'd have to lift these restrictions at some point. Mm. So at any given mm. point, mm. and actually his logic is quite good, that yeah. it's a good idea to do it while the schools are off, absolutely. while the summer in holidays the summer, are on. Absolutely. And I think he will, after that is done, he will make a very good case in the future for never doing it yeah. again. I, I never want to hear from anyone in Sage ever again, to be honest yeah, with I, you. I, no. I, what I can never understand is why all, all these lockdown fans don't understand that if you have a lockdown and then you come out of lockdown and then a month later you have to go back into lockdown, mm. it means the first lockdown didn't work. Yes. All lockdowns do is delay the inevitable. Yeah, they they do, do not stop the And that's virus. what they've now worked so out. So we can't yeah. do it anymore. And, yeah, and yeah. because also they've worked out that numbers of infections are not now equally increased numbers of people exactly. dying. Exactly. It's actually a good that, thing. That link is actually a good thing. Yeah. So, but I mean, my favourite sage professor is Susan Mitchie of University oh, College oh, yeah. London. Mean, our favourite, our personal favourite. You mean Stalin's favorite. nanny. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Since she got all shirty with Richard oh, Madeley. Oh, that was great. Go, brilliant. Richard. Well, yeah. Richard Madeley was Apparently brilliant on that. he said to her on Good Morning Britain, um, do you think that your um, affiliation with the Communist Party is driving your political agenda? Yeah. And she said, I don't have a political agenda. And she refused to answer she the question. Oh, yeah, she got very Richard. Yeah, yeah, Richard, Richard, Richard was great Richard. on well that. Well Richard. But when she was the questioned... The reverse of a plank. When she was week. questioned, she said that maybe we need to wear masks forever. Yeah. Well, I'd be quite happy. I'm quite happy if she kept one on. Yeah. No problem there. Isn't several, that sexist? Yeah, on a number yes. of levels. No, it's not. It's, uh, it's communistist. <laughs> but I can still, actually, even though she's wearing a mask, I can still hear her. I just don't want to hear her again. You say that, but you, when you go into, I mean, I go into restaurants where maybe there's a bit of music playing and they come over into your table, it's getting a bit noisy. Oh, yeah. I can't hear them. No. No, I don't think I'm short of, uh, what's it called? Short of hard hearing. Hard of hearing. Hard of hearing, hard of hearing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever that short is. Short of hearing. Short <laughs> of breath <laughs> is what I am, and hard of hearing. When you get to my age, you can't remember which is which. You've got a subbing card, mate. Uh, well, listen, that's not the sort of talk we want on this show. Sorry. It's a family show. Stop <laughs> it immediately. Now, um, but you can't hear them mumbling, and you can't read their lips because you can't see no, their no, no. lips. 
And it's like, I'm sorry. And that's where you have to break all the social distance and yeah. get really close. Oh, so sorry, do you mind taking your mask off so I can actually yeah. see what you're saying to me? I, I mean, I don't know what Susan Massey, what on earth is she doing as a government advisor? Don't tell, she's a lifelong member yeah. of the Communist right. Party. Shouldn't they have one or two questions? And I've asked various other doctors uh, on the radio, just said, well, do you think it's like, you know, commensurate with being a government advisor that you're a lifelong fanatical member of the Communist Party? They said, how dare you impugn right. her medical <laughs> <laughs> but she's also she's rubbish. only a behavioural scientist. She's, behavioural she's, not, scientist. she's not a, she she's knows not a about as much about doctors she's as I do. Psychologist, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's a psychologist. But exactly. you've got on the other hand, you've got Dr. Mike Aram Tilsley, member of the scientific pandemic influenza group modelling, oh, yeah. which provides data to the likes of Susan Mitchie saying that July nineteenth, probably the right time. Uh, we're going to have to remove them, seeing really low numbers and talking a lot of sense. Yeah, I think they should just sack Sage and just say cheerio. Yeah. You yeah. know, when we, we'll need, if we want you, we'll give you a call. Well, Paris, I thought but, we all know. use our common sense to make decisions about our own health. I know. Absolutely shocking. Any case, planks. Planks, oh, absolutely it's good right. To be back, Sage, it? it is good. Kevin, who's your first? Uh, one? My first is the new Labour MP for Batley and Spen, oh, Kim yeah. Leadbeater. Oh, yes. Uh, the triumphant Labour candidate who won by 300. Well, you say triumphant. Well, she won by 323 <laughs> votes, uh, successfully avoiding throughout that disgusting <laughs> campaign ever confronting the major issue in that constituency, and that is the shocking plight of that poor Batley and Grammar mm. School teacher mm. who remains in hiding four months after yeah. the local mm. Muslim uh, mob uh, decided uh, they should issue a fatwa on him and he must be sacked because he had the temerity and beheaded. to teach his kids about mm. blasphemy in a religious yeah. education. Uh, lesson now, uh, unbeknownst to most people, in the last week the school has exonerated him from doing anything wrong yeah. and said he can can come back to do his job. However, he he it remains in hiding because he's terrified for his life and for the wife, the life of his wife and his children. And what other people don't also realise is the entire religious education department mm. of Batley Grammar School have uh, left the school mm. in terror. Uh, so really? there are two other teachers who. Left yeah, as well I know. because the Muslims do not like what mm. they're teaching. Unbelievable. Uh, this is a freedom of speech issue. Leadbeater never mentioned it. In fairness to her, nor did the Tories. It was a, an act of tremendous political mm. cowardice by uh, both of yeah. the main candidates. Uh, and when at one point an angry mob, uh, all virtually pinned Kim to the wall and said, what are you going to do about mm. the teacher? Mm. She said, well, he, it, it's his own decision. Yeah. That it's was a all she for said. Him. And it's now it's a matter for him. whether he gets yeah. beheaded it's or not. That's why he's in hiding. It's a matter for him. He's made his own decision. Well, now she's in Parliament and she represents him. If she doesn't do anything about it, I'm going to make her life a nightmare and night after night on talk mm. radio. And I think we all should. Well, because it's her job she should to look after she his interests. Well, she actually mentioned Palestine more than she mentioned that poor man and his family. Well, she didn't mention that poor man and his family. She was questioned on it. She did. And but that no, was she it. didn't. Was she time. didn't. She but said was, one thing about yeah, it. He's in hiding. Yeah, but this is what I was saying to someone the other day that, you know, isn't it a very odd state of affairs that we have a by-election in Britain in 2021 yeah. and the big issues are Palestine and Kashmir? Yeah. Because Keir Starmer, who may appear later in the show, uh, <laughs> came out and said, oh, isn't it great that we won because of hope? Isn't it great that we won because of uh, everything except hate? She was putting out posters with um, the Indian Prime Minister's face on it, meeting yeah. Boris Johnson, because she knew, as all the Labour supporters knew, that that would enrage the, mm. um, the Muslim community to such an extent that they wouldn't vote Conservative yeah. because they hate the Indians. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what sort of nonsense well, is she's that? Now, she's now in Parliament. She kind of punched the air when she marched into the chamber today. Uh, no. And uh, if she doesn't do anything for that teacher, yeah. then uh, she is the political coward of the county. And just, just remind me how successful Labour actually were. How many votes did they yeah, actually make to lose? Well, yeah, they, well, they reduced <laughs> it by a factor of ten. Yeah. Yeah. They went from three and a half thousand to three and a half hundred, well, effectively. Success, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was extrapolated mm. to me that if they had had the same swing to the Tories in the national election, they'd lose another 11 seats. Yep. Mm -hmm. Keir yeah. Starmer calls that a victory. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really? And, and, they, and they, she only won by 323 uh, votes because of uh, Matt Hancock. Yes. Uh, otherwise, yeah. she would have lost. Yeah. I know. So that's somebody else's, um, you know. <sighs> anyway, um, that's enough about him. I'm going to go, might as well stick with Keir Starmer while we're on the subject. Go on, I go was, to right. reckless Eric. I know, I was, <laughs> going to, I was going to carry him over, but I think actually because of his activities, I'm going to have to make him properly, officially available for him, number one, two or three. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, first of all, Saturday night, I don't know whether you saw his tweets. I mean, he was doing loads of tweets before the game on yeah. Friday yeah. and Thursday, 
He's trying to sort of, you know, garner this whole kind of, you know, nationalistic support, yeah. sense of, yeah. you know, kids coming home. <coughs> and, I mean, the guy just doesn't really get it. Yeah. He doesn't, I mean, even though he plays football and his supporters say he's quite a good footballer and he supposedly supports Arsenal, I think, you know, he talks as if... Uh, uh, I hate he, him even more. Yeah, yeah but, he tweets, but he tweets fan, like he? a guy who doesn't understand football. No. Right? And the, the half-time uh, whistle went, and he tweets out this ridiculous picture of him going like this, right? At, at what looks like a p pub table, yeah. but at which there is no drink no. in yeah. front of him, right? Yeah. So he's trying to be sort of man of the people. He's wearing an England shirt. He's got his hands like this, and he goes, brilliant first half, great assist by Sterling, assist. and goal um, by Harry yeah. Kane. And it's like... We don't call it an assist. I mean, I know that some people in sport do, but, you know, as a they are, average... They they, they, is the yeah, word he's yeah, yeah, as, an, yeah. as an average, you know, the the pass, will not male, that, no. male and female fan of football, you don't say, no. wasn't that a great assist, Well, Kev would never say that about Fulham. Uh, well, I mean, literally really never. Actually, actually we, we do pass, but always sideways <laughs> yes. and backwards. Excellent. Which but is what England used to do. Now they've apparently learned how to pass it forward. But, but what did you, say, what you say when they narrow, narrowly won Batley and Spen? Uh, so I've never understood particularly what football's coming home actually means. Mm. Uh, but it becomes even more meaningless when he goes, Labour's coming home. Yeah. What? Where? Where exactly. to? Where did it go? Palestine. Where did it go? Palestine. Yeah, Palestine. The Gaza Strip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unbelievable. The, the Hindu Kush. Labour's you know. coming home. Yeah, he does. Come this on. is the point. He keeps, he's, whoever he's got giving him this advice, he has to keep getting new people yeah. in because he has to keep firing them. But he doesn't seem to have any idea because of his own kind of. You know, just ludicrous. Um, I, what's the word? They Separation call it, from the rest of us. Well, yeah, but it's this kind of tone deafness that he seems it's, to have. He's never seen a fence he doesn't like. And, has and, he no, he on. hasn't. And then just to sort of make matters worse, at full time he sends out a different picture from the same pub. Oh yeah, right? I saw this one. Only yeah. this time yeah. he's got a pint of beer yeah. in front because they obviously yeah. went, oh, oh we did yeah. put any beer. Yeah. You're not right. quite man of the people and also, enough. And also have somebody and also somebody said, obviously, do you remember that last pub we took a picture of him in after he got kicked out of the one in Bath? <laughs> and everyone said, oh look, the pint's not been touched, right? So guess what? This one, half full. I bet he so didn't drink it either. Looks like he was drinking. But so basically, but it's also surrounded by all these apparatchiks who clearly don't watch football. They're all these kind of, you know... Or drink pints in pubs. No, sort no. Of socialist wonks, no. for want of a better yeah. word, you know. And here they all are. Now, that would have been bad enough. But then, yesterday, after Boris's great sort of Freedom Day speech, he comes out and goes... Well, it would be very, very reckless for yeah, Boris reckless. To, 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 drop all restrictions. To, to drop all restrictions. I think we should keep wearing masks. So yeah, the yeah. geezer what? in a pub jumping up and down with no mask on? I know. I'll tell Just, you. Going on. Frank. He's the great. He's an inheritor. The inheritor Swank. of a great Labour <laughs> tradition there, though, because what two faces? Well, no. You've got the, all Labour leaders have to sort of pretend that they're kind of a bit working class yeah, and men yeah. of the people. So Harold Wilson, when in public, was always seen with a pint in his pipe. Yeah. Uh, away from the public, all he ever drank was uh, expensive cognac and priceless Cuban cigars. Yeah. Uh, complete fraudulent. And did he not also have that guy who made the um, raincoats in his pocket? You know. The the, uh, yeah. Probably his name. Mm. But uh, there was some kind of jiggle. Yeah, well, he's had his, uh, his signature rain. rain yeah, exactly, right. But uh, yeah, I mean, so Labour leaders in particular, <coughs> but Tory leaders do it. Well, as Tony well. Blair did it, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, they always try to be down. He was at a, a Newcastle match before he was born. Yeah, wasn't they he? try. Yeah, they try, try to be down. Then he yeah. seen Jackie yeah. Milburn yeah. play. Yeah, yeah. In Newcastle. Yeah. And uh, David Cameron, of course, a uh, big Aston Villa supporter. Yeah. Well, I literally with West Ham. Well, they do play Claret and Blue. I mean, it's easily done. I had a lunch with David Cameron. It was just the two of us and it was the most cringing thing ever because he he'd didn't need to anything he, he, <laughs> hey um he'd obviously read up on notes about you know like yeah about Briefing what, paper. what does she like um any case so she likes football she supports west ham oh, yeah. um and he was, you could literally see him go so west ham so <laughs> trevor brooking <laughs> yeah um Bobby Moore, yeah, and yes. he was like, "Oh, for God's sake! Yes. You're not convincing anyone." Unbelievable! Mm. It really. They should stay away from two things: humour and football. You know, anything else they can want to talk about, that's fine. But you know, otherwise, don't try and make any jokes, and don't try and pretend you know anything about football. Uh, the hired help, stay away from the hired help as well. Just well, not to, yeah, and the hired help. Or yeah. in fact, in, and also don't hire the ones that you're helping, well. as it were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Words to that effect. Stay, well, stay away from the help you hired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right, number two for you, Dawn. Oh, gosh, is it me again? We've oh, come right. round already. Okay, oh, I know. goes fast. I'm going to go, yourself. actually, who am I going to go for this one? I'm going to go for, it's a bit difficult, this one, because it's a Twitter hate mob. Mm. Which is a bit all-encompassing of basically most people on Twitter. Yes, yes. But this is linked to the football. Oh, yes. Which is going on, evidently. Mm. Uh, we need to get 
Keir Starmer in on this one. Uh, this is a primary school was forced to suspend its Twitter account after parents labelled a fun football video showing pupils performing the Vindaloo song. Yes. Remember the Vindaloo? I remember. Well, I saw the video, actually. Yeah. Because it got and passed around a lot, didn't yeah, it? It was one of those things great. that went viral. Kids as young as five right. painted their faces, St George's flag, dressed right. up, decorated the classroom. What, you mean had some fun? Had some fun. Yeah. I know. And were pushing each other around, yeah, this which is apparently a, people objected to. Uh, this yeah. is Fleet Street <laughs> Primary School in Fleetwood. Right. It's a little three-minute video, little kids singing to Fat Les's chart hit Vindaloo, supporting their national team, yeah. which is fine in Wales or Scotland, in English apparently it's quite so. many racist. Yes, of course. Um, and they reset parents, right? Parents supposedly said, this is disgusting. These children are being pressed to participate by the school. I have a seven-year-old child. I absolutely not want her to be exposed to this kind of mindless hooliganism. What? They're singing a song yeah. supporting their national side. And another one, another one. This one's And they're great. sort of marching because it's yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of song, it's isn't it? It's a song. Well, yeah. you watch the video clip. Yeah, yeah. And another one said, it's a sea of aggressive white faces. Oh, dear. Uh, because they How were, old are they? They're five. <laughs> because they're, they're, they're face, they're face painted with the flag of St. George. I mean, I was, I was Evil slightly, little five year old. Yeah, I was slightly puzzled <laughs> by this one because I was alerted to this yesterday and I went to find the Twitter account and it was still there. Yeah. Because, so apparently it was reinstated. Be, because, right? yeah, they, they had the Twitter parlour. So mm. Twitter parlour, I'm naming the Planks, by the way, not the school. The school yeah, did yeah. a brilliant job. No, the and they school were trying, great. We like They the were trying to teach the kids about how to put a video together yeah. and, you know, and all that sort of thing. Also, it looked it was, quite fun, by the way. They were having fun, you know? Mike. I mean, these are kids who have been locked away in their houses for most of the yeah, year. Quite. I you mean, know? you know, and sort of like, you know, one of them will cough and they'll all be sent home again now. But it's like, you know, and, and a lot of parents are sensible parents. So no, kids are having fun. They enjoyed it. So the school then put it back up there again. So right. the school have done brilliantly. But it's the, the idiot parents who created this pile on. But how can you find forced... something offensive about five-year-olds running around singing? Face painted, singing, supporting the yeah. England squad. I know. You do wonder, it's don't just, you? It's just honestly, I, I, it was just so. And little kids were having, such, as you said, Mike, they've had such a hard time over the past year, they like have. 15 months. Right. It was so, so much fun. And so, yeah, the trolls that did that, absolutely. But isn't this also, planks. it's a kind of, ex, ex, it's a sort of examination, isn't it, of where we now are? Because yes. we've talked about yeah, masks yeah, and all that yeah, before, yeah. where people are kind of take one side or the other. Yeah. And you mustn't do that. Uh, and and all these, where do all these people come from who keep wanting to tell us what to do? <sighs> What's wrong with them? Confected yeah. outrage. Yeah. Yeah. All the time looking. For something but to every, be everything by. is divisive now, from 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 Brexit to masks to the whole taking the knee before football games yeah. to that's, you know, that's, our that's flags, going very quick these days, statues. isn't it? I mean, I don't think they, they barely touched the knee on the ground yeah, before no, they're up I again. Know, yeah, yeah you know. but they're not going to get away with that. You know, the, England are just about going to get away with it because they're doing very well. Yeah, uh, and pe it's been kind of overshadowed. But if you heard, even in Rome, you could hear the booze. Oh yeah, uh, and up and down the country, pubs and yeah. uh, mm. venues where people went to watch it on TV, the boos were cacophonous. Because people are not people, really told people, not to boo. fans hate yeah. the taking of the knee. Yeah, they hate the players so grovelling to Black yeah. Lives Matter. And the Premier League and the other leagues, when they launch the season, the new season next month, uh, are going to find out exactly what yeah. the fans uh, Yeah, no, I agree think. with that. Yeah. Absolutely right. Uh, coming up, <laughs> my, <laughs> third, my second oh, nomination God, is... you only had two. I've only had one. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're only on the second one, yeah. <laughs> it's a four-hour special <laughs> yeah, today. <it's> long... <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a lot of arguing later. Um, we're going north of the border, but not uh, to name anybody from the SNP for a change. This is now about a school in Edinburgh called James Gillespie's High School, which apparently has quite a, a, a sort of track record. It was supposedly the place where uh, the prime of Miss Jean Brodie uh, was based. I don't know if you remember that movie. Yeah. And Look, the book. Aye. Oh, yeah. Aye, the Maggie new, Smith. Uh, that's right. Well, there's a book called Alan Crosby there, who is now called the Curriculum Leader for English. Apparently that's what they call teachers. Teachers. Curri yeah, he's an English teacher. That's a sort of primary school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Curriculum leader for English, right? Oh, He's decided God. that he doesn't think it's a very good idea uh, to actually have classic books uh, that the kids read, like <laughs> To Kill a Mockingbird uh, and Of Mice and Men, right? Yeah. Now, To Kill a Mockingbird, aside from anything else, has been already sort of um, created um, and, and, and represented by almost every single person in the world. I mean, it's probably one of the, the most read books. It is one of in them. The world. It's on pretty much yeah. every curriculum and it was, throughout and it was the world. And it was actually awarded. 
the, the book that most people who were asked the question um, thought was the best book they'd ever read, right? And it is a fantastic book. And it is, of course, um, written in the 1960s. Harper it's Harper yeah. Lee. Um, I mean, there's so much interesting stuff around the book that we could talk about. But the only just book the, she ever wrote, wasn't it? Yeah. Until she and then, wrote, wrote and a then follow-up somebody, about two years And somebody ago. found this, yeah, somebody found that she'd written a follow-up. And yeah, I think, they, right. did they not did find they? it rather than... Um, I'm not sure, but it came remember. out a couple of years ago. Exactly, but it came yeah. out, yeah. And I mean, the idea is that, you know, they've decided that they don't want people to read these books on the basis that they represent racism somehow old-fashionedly, and they think that it's wrong. Now, surely the point about reading books is that they were written at a particular time, or they were written about a particular yeah. time, and what, what they're going to what they're going to actually do now um, is is replace the books, right, with modern books. Yeah. Well, like Meghan Markle's The Bench. Well, The Bench, unfortunately, can't be, part, words. can't be part <laughs> of the new <laughs> curriculum because it's actually not. No, they're, 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 they're getting one called The Hate You Give. Uh, where it has the, the word you spelt with a U. That's literally. Oh, right, so that's good, isn't it, for oh, English students? It um, and it's written by somebody called Angie Thomas, um, and it's in a book written in response to the 2009 oh. police shooting of Oscar Grant. I don't know. I've, I've never heard of that. Oh, I've never heard of him. R.I.P. Oscar. But here's the word that they want to, to do. This is the word. They want to decolonise the curriculum. Of course. Oh. You know, with greater emphasis on material that better represents the full range of human experience. I mean, if I was learning English, that's not the sort of sentence I would want to read. So, Isn't it ridiculous? So, in other words, you, t you take one of the great uh, pioneering anti-racist works of literature. An inspirational yeah. say, book. Yeah, the, 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 To Kill a Mockingbird, and you say, well, that's not good enough anymore. Yeah. No. It also did happen to win the Pulitzer Prize. Okay, yeah. I, 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 you know, I mean, what do they know? I, I'm sure that not, not at much, some actually. point would have been... <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah, it's like, it's like watching an Oscar-nominated yeah. film. But it's really about like. racism in the south of America yeah. in the 1950s. It's an amazing book. Which is, uh, you know, a worthy story told incredibly well, um, as is, um, you know, um, the other one, you know, it's just, it's just absolutely beggars belief. Uh, well, when, when they the might as well be burning the books, might not they? Uh, hasn't that been tried in history? So it has been tried. I think it might didn't not work have gone out, that well. Didn't work no, out terribly well. No. But I mean, this guy is an utter, complete and utter plank. And I mean, this is what's wrong. I think when we did a story today about how something like 70% of 16 to 34 year olds think that we should have economics uh, run in a socialist sort of way, this is why. Because all our kids at school are being taught by these bozos who are telling them oh. that, you know, all old literature is wrong. Yeah. Anything written by anybody white is wrong. Yeah. Anybody uh, who makes money is a, a bad person. Uh, Any company that's a capitalist company wasn't, is bad. Wasn't the there National there? Education Union just put, uh, put out this report that that's what they must teach kids. Uh, and uh, they, they're talking about... Uh, T teaching kids between five and seven the importance of using the right pronoun. So my oh, argument yeah. would be, how do you teach a, a kid correct grammar if you say that entity over there, uh, you know, is a mm. non-binary, non-gender, yes. mm. uh, gender fluid mm. uh, person, mm. uh, and you must you must address that singular entity in the plural. Yes, like as so in them. So they or them. Right. How do you teach... Uh, That's not English, is it? How do you it's teach not kids English, grammar no, against no. the backdrop of that uh, linguistic atrocity? How are they doing this in France, where obviously we know that certain words are either feminine or masculine? Well, I mean, like, you just have to rewrite the entire la, French language. Or les. I mean, how Surely. does that work? I don't know. But, I mean, Barclays Bank got on the act this week. Have you seen the Barclays they Bank did. one? Yes, yeah. I did yeah. see that. Yeah. Just, yeah. just get on with doing but, a bit well, of banking, yeah. I think would be fine. <laughs> well, I think that there might be a letter that's slightly wrong yeah. in that phrase. Exactly but right. Yeah, but they, you know, they they put out an advert, nothing to do with their financial services or how they're helping people through the, ban uh, the pandemic, but all about misgendering customers. Mm. Yeah, you've got to be so careful these days. <laughs> Bankers. <laughs> Bad news Bankers. for the banknotes as well, isn't it? Because yeah. you've got sort of people's faces on banknotes. And presumably, all, mostly old white folk, aren't have they? To, they'll have to change that, yeah. won't they? That'll be the next thing yeah oh god mm. i never thought of that crikey anyway where's your third oh my third one right okay i'm gonna go for it's a uh, another perennial mm -hmm. favorite i'm afraid uh sadiq khan oh yeah yeah good old um, sadiq this is this is the uh, um it's, it's tying in with the football again not that i'm enjoying the, the football stabbers friend <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah this might come into the equation actually <laughs> he's put out our, um, a, a, a tweet this week that he has somehow he has two euro final tickets um at wembley obviously what's he touting them out uh, yeah quite is yeah the <laughs> world's worst tear yeah. Any, the TFL any, London. Right, he's, uh, yeah um well i could do with the money couldn't i considering <laughs> what it's done That's to true. it. Any case, he's saying that basically provided you can prove that you've had double jabs, oh, yeah. you're in a chance of winning these two tickets from him. 
That's ridiculous. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's not. It's, 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 also, one, it's he not shouldn't be lot. running a ticket lottery. No, of course he shouldn't. It's shouldn. not his job. No. Two people, two young men I, at, at were stabbed time, to death. As two kids were stabbed to death right. in London. Um, and it's like, where is this bloke coming from? What is he actually doing? I mean, I know around the world... He's that, saving know, lives one mask at a time. <laughs> It's, it's literally unbelievable. I mean, I was going to actually nominate the Metropolitan Police, but maybe what I'll do is roll them into your Sadiq Khan. Roll, roll them into me, Because I was going to be um, I very critical of them, um, not because of the fact that they still haven't seemed to put any kind of a dent in the, in the, in the, in the stabbings and the, and the crime that's going on the streets of this, of this city, but because they started attacking football supporters on Saturday <laughs> night who were out celebrating England beating Ukraine 4-0, getting into the semi-final for the first time in a long 25 time years. into the Euro, at Wembley, I think, since 66, yeah. isn't it, right? And, I mean, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I'm, assure, I'm sure that there could be some drunks who were probably a little bit feisty. But I don't think steaming in en masse, which is what the police did, what? is the way to do it. Funny enough, I don't treat really them. remember them doing that, the Black Lives Matter or no. the, um, who are that, climate change mob? No, extinction extinction right. I know, they, 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 they skateboard around yeah, them. Yeah, skateboard and, and do they a dance, nice little TikTok dance, dance with, with them. them. Yeah. But so they, they love cracking the heads of football fans. Mm. And I'm afraid by the time you see this, uh, you might not have actually, um, it might not have actually happened yet. But Wednesday night, if England win, we'll be the same. Up and down the country, there'll be people out in the streets partying, drinking, mm, dancing, singing. Mm, mm -hmm. Now, the grounds supposedly for the police to, to steam in were that they were breaking COVID rules, yeah. right? Oh, oh really? Okay. okay. Well, so now that we're going to do away with all of those in two uh, weeks, yeah. are we going to see the cops go, come on, one last go, guys. Yeah. One last go. Yeah. Crack, crack with a bat. Probably. Fun, they just need to take a step but, back. But, you know, if we're talking about breaking COVID rules, they didn't investigate um, Matt Hancock, did they? No, because that was retrospective. Right, Which okay. slightly puzzled me on the grounds that, uh, and I think All I said this criminal to Kevin, investigations most yeah. criminal investigations are All. about something All. that happened before. Yeah. So yeah. you could, you I don't could, investigate I could... them live as they happen. <laughs> no. So... As you attack this man, I'm the police officer, I will yeah. be watching. I will be investigating <laughs> so I, you. I could literally murder Kev this afternoon. Yeah. No one finds out about it till yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And I go, well, under, the, under the police yeah, system, that's yeah. fair. Under the police yeah. system, the cops will actually either be that, there. Either that, or maybe they're working on the new sort of TARDIS police box where they can go into the future and start investigating crimes that haven't happened yet. It's just, it's just crazy. Yeah. It's just crazy. Did you just love the TARDIS? The guy, that, the TARDIS. Matt Hancock's offence was so much, in terms of crime, was so much worse than the whistleblower who, uh, quite rightly, as a public service, uh, re released mm. to the sun that foot CCTV footage. That yeah. was well, a, imagine if he hadn't that done that. public service. Yeah. Yeah. Look right what's happened since. Oh, God, absolutely. We've actually got someone in the so what doing. If we'd never known about yeah. that, right, Hancock would still be there. Uh, we would not have had that press mm. conference yesterday. Mm. We would not have had somebody no. like yeah. Sajid yeah. Javid yeah. saying, you know, we need to look after everybody's yeah. health, not just people yeah. with COVID. And we wouldn't probably well, be... We, we be but they're, still but they're, chasing, they're chasing, they're trying to find the person who leaked the CCTV footage of the sun with a view to a criminal prosecution. Ridiculous. If they do that, there's two things that are going to happen. One, he or she is going to have a fantastic whistleblower mm. defence. I did this in the public yep. interest. Yeah, very much. Quite rightly. And two, if they try to prosecute him, the media is going to go absolutely yep. hell for leather. So mm. if you do this, you've got to prosecute Hancock. Yeah. End of. I exactly. think that's worth a George's Cross... There you go. Yes, uh, well, I mean, let's not get carried away. You see, I'm not in favour of handing out these <laughs> awards to people all the time. You know, people should be able to go through their lives. Only because you'll never win to, one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right, well, that may well be true, uh, although it's not actually. Arise, sir, O'Sullivan. Because I have already won an award, or several awards, actually, but I won't bore you with that. But the point is this, you know, um, you should not be getting an award for doing what you're meant to do. That's right. Doing your job. Do your job, yeah, I know. get paid, mm -hmm. go home, yeah. that's you're, enough. You're not a hero you're for not going a hero. to work no. and getting paid for the job that no. you do. I mean, yeah. if something is outstandingly uh, unusual, like, you know, you, you jump into a river and save somebody's life, with, you didn't have to do that, that's Within not your job. Yeah. Your job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the very different, oh, oh, and I would give that person a George Cross not just people who've just done their were, job. Yeah, look, there's no doubt that those frontline workers uh, were, were admirable, but I, I, I'd stop short of saying they're absolute heroes. They're yeah. not. Yeah. And plus, where do we, you know, the people driving buses, the yeah, people right. driving yeah. delivery drivers. What about, the people, drive, in, what about the people in supermarkets? Yeah, or, people or in my particular heroes, the ones that I got onto the doorstep to applaud and bang pots about, the Amazon drivers. Yes. Yeah. Who, who got us through this COVID crisis more than any other class of society. And mine were obviously radio presenters. Love Amazon. Yeah. Love well, Amazon. I used to go home um, late on once the first lot was over and demand that you my children they used, well, <laughs> I used to go home well you know, just, yeah, I know that was really unusual well it was a lockdown but you know I used to insist on my children clapping me as I came down the path yeah, you know. well, yeah, with they, the they, 
hand. Continually uh, refused to do it. They never did it. I said, what about me? I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job. It's absolutely outrageous what's going on. But I think it's brilliant that we don't make Jeff Bezos on that Amazon pay any tax because they're such a good company. Well, listen, he pays plenty of tax. This is where the left get it completely wrong. He pays loads of people who then pay tax, right? Who use uh, their facilities, who pay income tax. There's, co- there's corporation and, tax and there's yeah. income tax, right? Tell me now, about it. <laughs> he doesn't live here, so he doesn't pay income tax. They pay, they pay very little corporation tax. The so corporation tax is a waste of time. The tax business in this country is a disgrace, yeah, yeah, yeah. quite he, frankly. Mm. Amazon pay uh, exactly uh, what their accountants organise yeah. them having to pay, right. which is a very low rate. Right. Uh, but uh, most people, whether or not they were but if you think it, of would not like any uh, hindrances on Amazon because no. they're part of our lives and they were brilliant in the lockdown. But if you think of all the people that work for Amazon and all the money that the tax man gets yeah. from what they pay in tax it's quite a substantial mm. amount of money yeah. and would you rather not have them here yeah. so that you don't have any of that yeah. um, and would you banish them to Ireland yeah. you know so they don't have any yeah. business and in the left, no. left wingers hate Jeff Bezos yeah. because he's rich yes that's it exactly that's, it. that's why they hate him that's for it. the same reason they hate Boris and the masks because he's Boris and he's evil and yeah. they don't care about yeah. killing people. Yeah, and they hate Bill Gates because he's rich and he's also, he's, he's injected us with special bugs and <laughs> <laughs> he was in charge well, of the sure vaccine rollout. I'm not really well, sure about do. that. Well, they do. That is to do with that. Who you knows? Know, it's the hatred of rich people. Right. So is it your final one now? Is it? I've done some point where we are, to I've be honest with you. I think you've done three. Yeah. You've done yeah. three. Sadiq yeah. Khan. Was there anything yeah. else on Sadiq Khan you wanted to mention? No, no, that's it. I mean, you know, his surname spelled... He hasn't spelled, been on for a while, yeah. His surname spelled completely wrongly, yeah. but, I mean, it's similar close. I mean, it was funny when Angela Rayner mistook uh, Sadiq Khan and Sajid Javid. Yeah, yeah I know. That was funny. Well, they all sound alike, don't they? Well, according to her. Yeah, I know. But imagine if a Tory had done that. So racist. I know. Yeah. Off you go. Right, my third one is the British Board of Film Classification. Yes, which, uh, which, after the sum total of 93 complaints from snowflake parents, has reclassified <laughs> a, a number of films, including Rocky, Flash Gordon, Rocky. Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. They've all been moved from uh, eight years old, you yeah. can see them, to 12A, uh, because uh, parents said that these, uh, the, these films were too uh, offensive what? and what? shocking How? for their what? kids. Rocky's also, shocking. Yeah, and it's it shocking as the yeah, acting. Na- uh, nine, 93, 93 complaints. 27 were about the 1980s space opera Flash Gordon. That's a great film. Uh, I love that well, film. Uh, hang on a second, Mike. I don't think you've heard the details. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, Ming the Merciless. Ming the Merciless, brilliant. He's a racist character because he's Asian in appearance. And uh, it's the, from a comic book. The uh, uh, the reclassification. It's from a foreign planet. He's also Not to yeah. The point. Right. <laughs> Uh, the reclassification of Rocky, so that's to do with racial stereotypes. Is it what? So, so that's Italian. why they've reclassified Well, is he's called the Italian Stallion. No, no, no. <laughs> no, Ming, <laughs> Ming the Destroyer. Oh, sorry. Is an a- Asian stereotype, right. so that's why. Now, um, I thought it was Rocky, Ming the Merciless. Mercy, sir, or whatever. <laughs> what talking about now. <laughs> Ming the Merciless, that's right. I've You're going to make him Ming already. the Merciful. It's a rubbish film. It's a great uh, film. I hate that I love film. it. Uh, reclassification Princess of, Leia, I think. The, the reclassification of no. Rocky is due to moderate violence. <laughs> moderate mouthed, violence. Mouthed moderate strong, violence. Mouthed, He's punching the hell out of a guy yeah, in a boxing moderate, ring. Moderate violence. Mouthed strong language and domestic abuse. Domestic abuse? Yeah. Well, I, don't I don't remember, remember that. that bit. I don't yeah. remember that bit. What, with uh, Adrian? Adrian! Empire Strike Back. Uh, yeah. Which is just boring. Uh, re-release, uh, reclassified for moderate violence and mild threat. Mild threat? Mild yeah. threat. Yeah. What's the, a mild I'll tell you threat, what, the Death Star. Look at the Elephant than... Man got re- reclassified to 12A <laughs> with uh, um, John Hurt. <laughs> uh, that was reclassified. <laughs> <laughs> that was reclassified for moderate threat, upsetting scenes, and injury detail. I mean, just 93 what? complaints don't do it. The mod- Why do they buckle every time you get a snowflake? I was offended by this. My children were upset. Right, let's completely change the classification. Well, maybe, it's you know, nonsense. Maybe if your children are that easily upset, don't show them any films at all. Have, have they seen the computer games their little darlings are playing no, as well, I mean, by the way? Yeah. I mean... I mean, 101 Dalmatians is not very nice either. <laughs> karate, you know. The Karate Kid got reclassified for moderate violence and drug references. <laughs> <laughs> and on it goes. And on oh. it goes. I mean, th- and this is another publicly funded organisation, yeah, right? Yeah, quite. That is, is responsible yeah, for. Some people have got too much time on their hands. I think they have. Well, yeah. it's, it's not that, though, is it? It's, it's this. Th- it, as soon as somebody 
right into any organisation, public funded especially, and uh, complains that their children are upset or they were offended, this public organisation, no matter how few complaints yeah. they get, will go through the hoops to, to keep them happy. Yeah. And what they've got to do is say to these 93 uh, snowflake parents, do one. Yeah. We're not doing anything about yeah. it. Exactly. Live with it. Yeah. yeah. Just get over yourself. Deal with it. Maybe mm -hmm. explain to your children what's actually going on. Yeah. And when, you know, Darth Vader points to the Death Star, you could possibly tell them that it's only a story and it's not pointed at the earth and it's not actually going to blow us away. You know what? The away. kids will not have a problem with no. this, will they? The kids will be just in watching it, enjoying a film. Yeah. Uh, we've been talking a bit football. I'm going to nominate uh, the entire French football fan club, whatever <gasps> it's called. Zut alors. Because apparently um, they were the favourites to win the Euros. I didn't know that uh, until oui. the French people told me that mm. they said they had a great team. Because they have, of course, um, some fantastic players, right, including Kylian Mbappe. Uh, but they got horsed by Switzerland in mm. a penalty shootout. Yeah, I know. Not least because the Swiss. That Mbappe, it was the Swiss, yeah, uh, missed his penalty. And he was the guy right at the end. Mm -hmm. And so it was like sudden death by that point. And of course, he's one of the best players in the world. Everybody went, well, he's not going to miss, is he? And of course, sure as fate, he did. Now, yeah. the reason I've put the French football fans into the plank of the week is that over nearly 300,000 of them have signed a petition to have the game replayed between France and Switzerland. <laughs> even, though we've now, even though we've now <laughs> moved on by two rounds, right? We're now in the semi-finals. There's only four teams left. Um, Italy plays Spain tonight. You'll know what that result is tomorrow. Um, and England, of course, play Denmark. So, um, the petition was launched by a disgruntled French fan whose name is Pierre. Pierre. Oh, oh, Pierre. <laughs> right? And he's claiming, right, that uh, the goalkeeper from Switzerland, who's a guy called Jan Sommer, um, apparently saved the penalty, but because he moved beforehand, that the game, therefore, should never have been called and it should have been retaken. Oh. And so now they want to replay the whole game. Uh. Yeah, well, it's not going to happen, is it? Anyway, uh, no. I, would, I wouldn't go for it if I was France because I reckon Switzerland would beat them again. Yeah, I mean, no, why would quite. you want to submit yourself to a humiliation twice mm, over? Well, it's really the... not a good idea. No. Well, Adam, good. Wait, wait, wait for it. When the Swiss have already rolled you over once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. The Swiss are already out, though. The Swiss aren't even in it yeah, anymore. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. They want to replay the so game. Exactly. What's the point? Well, it's pointless. I mean, I, mean, I think there is there is a point. Here's what here's what it read, right? The original position said this: during the penalty shootout of the France v Switzerland match, goalkeeper Summer was not on his line ahead of Mbappe's shot. We ask that Switzerland's qualification is cancelled so that the match can be replayed. The sport must be played within the rules, and that evening the rules were not respected. But this yeah. was a penalty. Swiss, Switzerland are out. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I know. So but, but this was a penalty. So everyone was actually looking at that particular area of the pitch, including you think the officials who might have noticed. Also, if as it you was. know well, it's a very very sort of weird rule, isn't it? Because goalkeepers yeah. can be very good at not yeah. moving or not looking yeah. like they're moving, but they are actually yeah. moving or not being quite on the line. You know, I mean, it's one of those things. It swings and roundabouts. You know, it's... you might win one penalty shootout, you lose the next one. But the French will be having a riot about it next, won't they? Be setting fire to cars. They'll be setting fire to tires. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. put on <laughs> yellow jackets. Blockade. Replay the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Some bloke will drive, drive, some bloke will drive a load of manure into a, into a sort of the, the, the mayor's office in Lyon or something. No, you know, no. I, I love French cops. I have a, a sort of niece who lives that they live, the family lives in uh, um, Bordeaux, and they were out. She's just sort of their sort of school prom and they went to some bar afterwards and got a bit rowdy and when they came out the police were waiting and it was just a bunch of kids and they tear gassed them. <laughs> <laughs> they do love a punch up. <gasps> right, so we have reached the final nine. Now we've got to carry somebody over. And wow, I, that went fast. I'm a, I'm, I, think it's, I, I think it's going to have <laughs> to like be... I've been here a year. I think it's going to have to be Harry and Meghan again, isn't it? Because Harry came over uh, oh, to yeah, see on the, statue. the statue and behaved in quite a bizarre I way. To mention the statue, actually. We, should, yeah. we should have got the, sc the sculpture of the statue. Well, we mm. can have the sculpture of the statue in if you like. I'm going to go to go with Harry um, and Meghan because, of course, <coughs> you know, there's all sorts of reasons why they're in it this week. But he came, he left straight away again. Yeah. I mean, what's the problem of him staying about for a while to see some of his relatives? What is he doesn't like him. He doesn't like him, <laughs> and they don't. They yeah. ask him to leave. <laughs> also, for a man who wants to save the planet, right? <laughs> He gets into his very big yeah. Cadillac Escalade mm -hmm. in Montecito, drives quite a long way to LAX, gets on a huge plane, mm. gas-guzzling jumbo of some mm. kind, uh, flies across to London, goes into self-isolation after being driven in another big car mm. to Windsor. Um, I don't know how much all of that cost, but it probably cost us quite a fair uh, yeah, deal. Yeah, it would have been, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, he's he's yeah. got security, mm -hmm. you know, she's been 
banging on about something or other this week. I can't remember what it was. Shortened the life of the planet a bit. As well, a, he has it? shortened the life of the planet a bit. Also, they've been told by the people they're trying to copyright the name Archie well with this week. Uh, oh, that's um, it. Yeah, yeah. I knew there was something. They, that might, they don't want to classify it as an entertainment no, company. No, they're trying the to American make out. American authorities say basically this is an entertainment. This is an entertainment yeah. company. So if they have to admit that. Then it's no longer a charity. Exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. They might have to pay a, a bit foundation. more tax. Yeah. It's they not might a foundation. Have to, they might have to pay, foundation. They might have to pay a bit more tax as well, mm. if that's yeah. the case. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the day when he works out or somebody tells him that actually, now that you live in America, you are liable for tax living in America, oh. as you do. Mm. So how much have you got in the bank, mm. exactly? How much do you get paid mm. for your work that you do? He's going to mm. have to hand over millions well, he is gonna, he's to, the, yeah. to the US he's Treasury. He's American tax. No, absolutely. He can't. No, no one. No. 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 You and I know that, Mike. Absolutely right. Although we know people who tried to do it working <laughs> on it, and they got caught out I did now. my best, but it didn't work <laughs> out. <laughs> So here's the thing, right? We get Dawn Neeson, we get Kevin O'Sullivan back because they were the dream team. They were the people that held it all together when we couldn't get anybody into the building in the early part of this year, January, February, March, April. I think it was up until May. We couldn't really do it with anybody else. So we got them in because we knew they were reliable. We knew that they were good. We knew that they were opinionated and they wouldn't be shy in naming planks. And that's why they are the longest running duo on Plank of the Week. We got them in this week, but something went wrong. We don't quite know what, but right at the end, as we recorded the end bit, it's gone. It's disappeared. Now, I'm not blaming them because it might not be their fault. It might not be anybody's fault. It might just be one of those vagaries of, you know, commercial activity. It might just be somebody cyber attacked us. It might just be that something uh, went wrong in the electronic editing. We, we can't be sure. But what I can say for sure, absolutely for sure, is that we all did agree that there's only one plank this week. And funnily enough, it's actually been, uh, I would say, augmented by his behaviour since we recorded the original bit of Plank of the Week. And it is, of course, the man himself, Captain Hindsight, the leader of Her Majesty's Opposition. His name is Sir Keir Starmer. So, Sir Keir, keep it up. You are the Plank of the Week. And if this carries on like this, you might even become the Plank of the Year. Catch us next time. This is Talk Radio TV.